What's going on guys? This is Chandler Smith and today I'm gonna take you on a tour of the worst duplex I've ever owned and I've owned a fair amount of duplexes. However, this one has everything from evictions to money issues to problems with the actual property. And today we're gonna open up the books. We're gonna show you how the property's performed over the last seven years of ownership. And for the first time in seven years, I'm gonna get the opportunity to walk through the upstairs unit and kind of see how things are. So with all of that being said, let's jump into it. Now, this property is interesting for a couple reasons because first off, the neighborhood it was in when I purchased it was a neighborhood that a lot of people told me I should stay away from, that I would deal with more evictions, I would deal with more issues. However, I've seen a lot change in this neighborhood where in this particular area, a lot of people have purchased the properties and they've gotten better, not worse, which makes me extremely happy, not only for my community, but also for owning this property in this location. If you follow the channel, you also know that years ago, I had one of the worst evictions ever. We had months and months of the tenant not paying rent. We had to go through the entire eviction process. It was a super gnarly interaction. And I asked the tenant if I could actually sit down with them right here and kind of get their perspective on the eviction, on why we ended up where we did. It started out good and ended very, very bad. So you guys are good being out by Thursday then? I'm good being out by Friday, make you pay another 200 because you're dumb. And it was a major learning experience for me where now I do not interact with people <laughs> that are going through evictions or any of that. I chuckle because if I don't chuckle a little, I'll cry. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And that's one of those experiences. If I could go back and redo it again, I wouldn't have done it. Since then, we've dialed in the way that we get tenants. We've dialed in the way that we do a lot of things. We've gotten a lot better at our processes, but that was a major learning experience. And if you wanna check that out, we still have the video of that whole interaction that I'll put in a link down below. But today, we're gonna give you an update on how these units are doing. We're gonna see what the numbers look like and show you that the worst duplex I've ever owned is either, well, it's not as bad it's been bad and good, and we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna come check out uh, up here, so we'll head on in. So this tile was here when we purchased it, and it's actually in really great shape. Um, through the process, we've always had awesome tenants in the upstairs, just like we do right now. But this tile was here when we purchased the property. These floors, we also refinished, and it's interesting now, coming back seven years later, just seeing anytime you have hardwood, um, you consistently have to refinish it. And it looks like it also is getting to the point where probably time to refinish it again. The kitchen though, we left a lot of the old cabinets. They still look awesome. Um, it's really cool to see when the tenants have just really taken good care of the property where even though it's been seven years since purchasing the property, everything looks really well maintained and taken care of. All right, guys, the numbers on this property are crazy. Now, keep in mind, we've had two evictions out of the basement that cost us money, and it's probably in the roughest neighborhood slash area that I purchased real estate. But again, even though we've had all of these things, it's been a fantastic investment. I found it off of Craigslist. I immediately messaged the guy, and it's interesting because it wasn't that far after I had purchased my first duplex that we just did a video on, link in description. So this was my second duplex, I think my fourth overall real estate investment, third actual property I was purchasing. When negotiating with the owner of this property, it was really interesting because he told me he'd sell it for $86,000. Once he saw I was all ready to roll, last minute he bumped the price to 89,000, which really, really frustrated me. And he knew he was manipulating me and taking advantage. I was young and then he just said, no, like I'm gonna hold to it. I think because he knew he was selling it for way too low and he wanted to get a little bit more out of me. Now, the funny thing about this is he took advantage of me and it really sucked, but I was in the middle of financing and I was really diving into financing and the advantage of financing. And what I actually did is I went back to him, I'm like, that's fine, you can do that, but you're paying the closing costs. And he's like, fine, done deal. He didn't realize that closing costs when you have a loan cost it a lot more. So he went to the closing table and sees all these closing costs and he's like, what the heck? And I'm like, hey, like you didn't, you didn't wanna do your research on what that was. I could tell he was on the verge of bailing, but uh, he ended up not bailing and we finished it. And so overall, I absolutely crushed it. We put a $22,500 down payment 
and I had my management company email things over. At this point, the top unit is at 800, the bottom unit is at 650. So in total, that's 1450 that we're bringing in. Now from that 1450, I always like to set aside 24%. Now this is for my management company, this is for capital expenditures, my expenses, this is not including taxes and insurance. This is just all of the expenses and potential vacancy I like to plan for. So we're gonna multiply this by a 0.76. That leaves us with $1,102. Now if you look, and this is just crazy, but our mortgage on this property is actually only $455.58. So we're just gonna call that a clean $456. So we subtract $456. That means when we don't have incident, every month we're cash flowing $646 off of this property. So if you multiply 646 times 12, that puts us at $7,752 that we cash flow. Now, I didn't wanna go through all the math of the money we lost and the renovations we had to do after that gnarly eviction. I will say, honest to goodness, the money we've made from the videos we posted on that has far paid for those renovations. So thank you, YouTube community. Now we've consistently had good tenants in there, low maintenance, not very many issues other than those two evictions. The other eviction was quick and easy, probably only lost a month worth of rent. And so when you look at the big picture, on top of that, what's crazy is how much we've paid down on the property. Originally, we had borrowed $66,750. That's been paid down to $58,200. The property's appreciated like crazy. It's easily over $200,000 now when we paid $86,000 for it, maybe even close to $250,000. So when I go and look at what I would consider the worst duplex I've ever purchased, I look at the state of it now, I look at what we've been through, it has been so, so worth it. Just walking the exterior of the property, it's cool to see that everything looks like it's in really good shape, all things considered. The siding is still held up well and I'm not seeing any major issues that I'm worried about. All of the windows have been replaced and are in really good shape. So this is something that I just noticed while walking the property that we're gonna need to get fixed. It looks like someone's thrown something and broken the window. It's actually crazy because it does look like the inside window pane is still working, the outside one is not. But for their power bill, um, that's gonna be a pain. And if you believe in the broken window theory, we need to get the window fixed so that we don't have other issues in the future. Now guys, one of the biggest reasons I had to deal with terrible evictions and losing money and you know everything that comes with the worst case scenario of being a landlord is because I was very self-educated and I made a lot of mistakes on my own without getting the proper help to mitigate some of the risks that come and the incidents that ended up coming. So that's why I created my real estate investing course. I've got a link down below. You can snag $50 off of that and I have put hours and hours and hours into creating that and then recreating it and fine tuning it so that it gives you everything you need to have in order to go from no rental properties to scaling your real estate investing business. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to remember to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell. We'll look forward to seeing you in the future videos. Thanks guys.